very short way in calculus, you will be taking the derivative of functions. The which, derivative? Yes, what the, the heck derivative. does that even uh, mean? That's right, Ms. Stewart. Well, a, a derivative is a slope or rate of change. You will be finding the rate of change of a function at a certain point. How fun. Yeah, it's good. It's a good time. And you're going to end up with things that look like this, very much like mm. this. And you, you will be asked to simplify them. So we're just going to go over a few examples of how to simplify these things. So we're not doing calculus now. We're just doing algebra. Oh, no. But it's going to show up in the But it's the, the algebra calculus. required to be able to simplify these things which we're going to get to when we get to the calculus part. Love that. All right. So it just says factor. I, I guess I could have written factor and simplify. So I'm just looking at this big long thing here. And how many terms do I have? I always think it's about thinking about how many terms I think I that is an excellent place yeah. to begin. I see two terms. In fact, I have two terms. Right? Yeah. I have this first term, and I have this second term minus this whole other guy yeah. here. And the factoring, I'm just looking to see what they have in common. They both have this 3x plus 1 in common. Um, there's something weird visually sometimes to do. So I'm going to factor this out. I'll move it in front. So that's a GCF, That basically. is the greatest common factor. Well, what's left from this first term? 5x. What's left from this second term? And then you have your minus a 10. Am I done? Well. I guess, but I mean, I guess I could continue to factor it a little bit more. I can see that the second term has a greatest common factor. It has a 5. So I'll, can I just move that out front? Sure. Does it matter where you put that 5? It doesn't really, but I'd like to have it sitting out there yeah. by itself. It's exactly right. Great. Okay, so I'm left with an x minus 2, and I think I am fully factored. Fantastic. Why don't you scoot that way oh, a little sorry. bit so we can look. Yeah, so now I have one term. Right, and you know, maybe this seems arbitrary, but the, the reason that you want to end up with something like this in calculus is so that you can then continue and do something further with this term, with this expression. Right. And let's just be clear. Factor means you're breaking things apart. Yes. As opposed to the opposite, which would be expanding it or multiplying right. it out. Right. I'm not, notice I'm not distributing here, and I'm not distributing this. Right. Which you right. could be asked to do. And in fact, you could be asked to expand that, and then you would be multiplying. So we're doing the opposite of that, and we're factoring it. Love it. No regrets, Coyote. We just come from such different sets of circles. I'm going to factor now to help me simplify this expression. So again, this is going to be another thing that we're going to end up getting when we learn how to do calculus stuff, derivatives. And we want to be prepared to do the algebra. So this is a rational expression, since I have a fraction. And if you recall from Algebra 2 with Trig, we often factor these things in order to divide things, or to cancel, sometimes you say, in order to simplify up to down. So I need to factor these things first. So let's, uh, let's play the how many terms game. How many terms do I have ah. in the numerator? Ah, I think you have two terms I up there. I have two terms, a blob plus a blob. How many terms do I have in the denominator? You've got three terms I have down three there. terms. So I cannot do any dividing because I have things added in the numerator, I have things added and subtracted. Right, right. So, you can only divide if you have one term basically on top and a term on the bottom. Right. Sure. Um, Unless um, the top and the bottom are exactly the same. Yes, exactly we've done this same. routine before. Yes. Right. Okay, so let's factor. Let's do what you just did and look for a common factor. I have two terms. What would you say they have in common, Mr. Haas? I'm going to say they have an x minus 3 to the fifth. Okay, well done. Yeah, they both have an x minus 3, and in fact, they both have an x minus 3 to the, to the fifth. So I'm going to factor that out. That's my greatest common factor. I'm going to pull that out front. I'm going to put a big set of parentheses here to see what's left over. So in this first term, if I take out x minus 3 to the fifth, I think you'll agree I have a 6 left. Looks good. Plus, now what do I have left in the second term? Well, you have an x, and you still have one more of those x minus 3s. I have one more of those x minus 3s left. And okay. I love the parentheses within parentheses. Sometimes students forget to do that. They won't put those outer parentheses on there. And then you're left thinking, well, do I just multiply the x minus 3 to the fifth times right. the 6 and not the other thing? Right. Oh, no. Right. You need those outer parentheses. You do. And sometimes 
instead of, so you don't get confused, sometimes we will use, instead of parentheses, brackets, which are just parentheses, just to show you have parentheses within parentheses. But that freaks out some people too. I, I like using the brackets, I but you're right. Some students brackets. think it has a different meaning. It does not. In it's this just context, to match them up. It just means parentheses. Okay, so let's factor the denominator, and then we'll come back and go further. That's a nice little, uh, oh, hold on. Hold the phone, as the student used to say. Is that factorable? I don't think it is. So there's nothing to do yet. All right, so I'm stuck with that denominator for now. That's fine. But I think I can do some simplifying in the numerator. Oh my goodness gracious. So here we go. x minus 3 to the fifth. I'm going to get rid of those uh, big parentheses here. Because look at what's in here. Often when we do this, we end up with something that is a little messy. Can I clean that up a little bit? Absolutely. So I'm going to clean up that factor by just distributing that x and seeing what I got. So I have x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 3, which is negative 3x. All right, let's see what I have here. Uh, ha, ha, ha. This is very exciting. So now, before I get too excited, I have the top fully factored. The bottom I decided I couldn't factor, but I am seeing you nod and I'm nodding. I'm seeing x squared minus 3x plus 6 in the numerator, x squared minus 3x plus 6 in the denominator. There's a cool property that's called the commutative property that says when things are added, I can just write them in a different order, right? So I'm just going to do that so that everybody in our viewing audience can see what we're seeing. Hey, check that out. Are those identical? They are. They sure are. If you want, I can put those parentheses around there and just say, hey, those divide to equal one. So this whole monstrosity simplifies to the very satisfying x minus 3 to the fifth. And I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to ask you to expand that out because that's just silly. That's nice. Thanks, Ms. Stewart. Early on your ranch, you'll be brushing out a brood mare's tail. You really want me to do another one of these, Mr. Yes, absolutely. They're fun. Yeah, all right, here we go. Factor to simplify. Again, you're going to end up with these things when you do some calculus derivative stuff, and you're going to have to simplify these guys. So let's get good so at it So I, I will factor in order to simplify. Again, I'm just going to look at the top here. I have two terms. Two terms in the numerator. I have two terms in the numerator, also known as upstairs, as sometimes I call it. Now, these guys look like they're, I have this in common. Go ahead. So I could factor that out. I could actually factor out a 2x as well. It's not going to matter a whole lot, but we could, should we do that? It doesn't matter. Why not? I'm sure. going to factor out a 2x from both of these guys. Ah, so what's going nice. on there? And I'm going to factor nice. out a uh, 3x squared plus 1 cubed from both of these guys. Very nice. Does that work? Am I going to bump into stuff here? No, I think you're good. OK. I got nothing there. I got a 1 there, I should say, because I pulled out the 2x. Right. See what's happening? I do. And I have one of these guys left. I pulled three of them out. So that is a 3x, and I'm, I like my square bracket thing. Go ahead and do it. Uh, 3x squared plus 1. Go ahead. And for my second term, let's see, I factored out a 2x, which will give me a 3x squared. Very nice. Of course, right? I'm, remember, I'm multiplying 2x times 3x squared. Oh, that's 6x cubed. Right. And I got rid of all three of these. Oh, oh they are gone. They're gone. I'm going to, there's only really a one left. I mean, I guess I could write the one, but I shan't. Very good. Say, as I often say. And again, those square brackets, those are just parentheses. They are, but it, it helps me know that I'm trying to line, you know, this matches with this. I like it. This matches with that. Downstairs, I still have, our, or in the denominator, I still have 3x squared plus 1, oops, to the 8th. Very nice. Maybe I'll clean up this stuff uh, on the inside. I can actually see right away I'm going to be able to get rid of 3 of these uh, and yeah. 3 of these. 
don't be tempted to start canceling this stuff now, though. Yeah. And so many people, you look at that first thing, and they just want to cross things out. But you they really do. have to be careful because of that subtraction. Right? I'm going to, yes, I'm going, oh, hey, look what I have here. I have a 3x squared plus 1 minus a 3x squared. So are you saying you can get rid of those parentheses around the 3x squared I plus can, 1? I are can. those just optional parentheses they are, at this because point? nothing's being multiplied. I don't have to distribute anything. I mean, these are really yeah, optional, sure. Uh, this is, of course, zero. I just have a one left over here. Nice. I'm just going to write that for the moment, just so you, you yeah. realize that that one is that guy right That's now. That's good. I have a 3x squared plus 1 to the 8. All right, so I have one term in the numerator and one term in the denominator, you so do. I can start uh, I can divide dividing. three of these guys away, that to the third. Divide three from the bottom, I'm left with five. Very of that. nice. Does that work? Yeah. And I'll just like write it and rewrite it over here. I have two x times one, which is of course just two x. And downstairs I have three x squared plus one the fifth. And I think I'm done, Miss Stewart. You are done. They're very satisfying to start with those big messy looking things and then to. Well, I'm satisfied. Yeah. Absolutely. Very Again, good. oh. <laughs> Don't be tempted. You're almost coming off there. Don't be tempted to start getting rid of like, oh, I'll get rid of three of these and three of these. You can't do that. You can't do that. It has to, you, you really want to bring this guy out in front first, clean it up, and then do your right. dividing. Right. Because really, you're dividing each of those two terms by that denominator. Right. Beautiful. Thank you.